So now that I have your complete and undivided attention, this is kind of what I imagine Jesus saying to the disciples after this moment of transfiguration. The New Testament is actually remarkably sparse in truly supernatural and miraculous moments. There certainly are a few. Obviously, the primary one would be the resurrection. But there are a few others. There are some feeding and some healing miracles. There is the appearance of the Father and the Holy Spirit at Jesus' baptism. And then there is this transfiguration moment. But there really aren't that many. In fact, by contrast to the Old Testament, there are remarkably few. The overwhelming majority of the account that we have of Jesus' life sounds relatively ordinary and natural. It's something that falls within the realm of what we would consider possible on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's his words and his character that so captivated the disciples back then and continue to captivate us and have us convinced that he is actually who he claims to be. But there are these supernatural and miraculous moments. And those are the ones where we have to think. This is where Jesus is really saying, I need your complete and undivided attention. And why? Well, as we look at the season that unfolds ahead of us, we're embarking into the annual season that calls us into deeper and newer levels of repentance each and every year. And the biblical word, at least in the New Testament, that's most often used for repentance is metanoia, which in Greek literally means above thought or to rise above thought. The idea is not so much to take what you're thinking and turn it around 180 degrees, although that is sometimes, especially in the ancient Hebrew, the idea of turning. It's rather to take what you're thinking, whether it's what you've been thinking or 180 degrees opposite of what you've been thinking, and rise above it completely. Think and engage with this problem on a whole new and higher level than you ever had before. One saying I really like is no problem is ever solved on the same level at which it was created. And so the biblical call to repentance is rise above the level on which the problem was created and think about it on a whole new level with a creativity you've never had before. I am convinced that these biblical moments of miracle, of supernaturalism, are to jar us out of our usual plane of thinking and open our minds and hearts to what we usually think is impossible so that we can actually engage in true repentance, true metanoia. How does this look practically? Well, I spent one of the last two weeks down in Mexico, had a delightful time, spent a couple days in the capital, climbed to 16,000 feet, and then spent a couple days in the state of Puebla. Every time I'm down in that nation, I am struck by something that I really would rather not be struck by. And that is just how utterly USA-centric, all of our rhetoric about Mexico and pretty much all of the lands directly south of us happens to be on this side of the border. And this is to our detriment. We get these news pieces, these over-sensationalized splashes of violence, of drug cartels, of migrant caravans, and there seem to be two predictable responses to that. One is what I would call the demonizing or the antagonistic response. Keep that out of our backyard. Close the borders, restrict access as much as possible, clamp down, let their problems be their problems, keep them out of our place. Obviously, this is rather dehumanizing, and it has proven quite ineffective, I dare say. But the 
we say is the patronizing response. It's the Mexico and Central and South America are monolithic. Oh, pobrecitos. These poor people, you know, are in a circumstance that really just absolutely makes it impossible to run affairs as we would like, makes it impossible to live safely. And so we who really have it all together and who have all the wealth and power, we need to sort of receive everybody and take care of everybody because they don't know how to take care of themselves. This is equally dehumanizing. Every time I'm down in Mexico, I see evidence that is incontrovertible that no one is more concerned about violence and drug trafficking and illegal migration in that part of the world as your average Mexican. And no one is being more active and creative about responding to these problems as your average Mexican. And neither of the two typical responses on this side of the border come anywhere close to countenancing and honoring that reality. I wonder what it would look like if the United States were to engage our neighbor to the South as an ally, as an equal, with the assumption that there is at least as much concern on that side of the border about all these problems as there is on our side, and with an overture that said, how could we, in the spirit of true friendship and cooperation, together address these issues in a way that assures our mutual prosperity? I dare say that's an experiment we haven't yet tried. That, my friends, is true metanoia. That is engaging the problem, trying to solve the problem on a level different from the one at which it was created. Now that's kind of a global, maybe a, a philosophical and an external problem. But as we approach Ash Wednesday and Lent, I wonder if we can't look at this narrative of the Transfiguration, one of the true, truly supernatural moments that we get in Scripture, and let it jar us out of our usual patterns of thinking. Let it raise the question in us, where is there a problem or a tension in my life, in the life of my family, in the life of my community, where I have been stuck in binary thinking for years. I've been stuck in either continuing the same old pattern I've done over and over again, which isn't working, but I don't know what to do except it's polar opposite, but it's pretty clear to me that that's not going to work either. And maybe instead, let this story jar us out of that type of thinking altogether help to rise above it and to think and engage this issue in a way that has not two, but a million different possible solutions. Because I don't believe that we're ever given an entirely unsolvable problem. With God's help, we can rise above thought and we can make progress on anything, no matter how daunting, no matter how impossible it Seeing. And that is the repentance, the metanoia, the work of Lent to which we're called as we embark on this holy season. So I invite you to ask yourself, don't make it overwhelming. Focus on maybe one 